Hey guys, a uh, product that it took me way, way, way too long to get on film. I have had this for a while, played around with it a couple of times, but uh, getting out to the car before it's dark outside to shoot something has been a little bit of a struggle. So I've got it all set up. I got the, the vehicle side of this mounted in the truck and got some footage of that. I'll walk you through this thing and then uh, we'll show it all set up in the vehicle, um, notional setup. I've got a bunch of kids uh, floating around the house, so I'm not gonna do as much uh, shot cord arts and crafts on here as it kind of lends itself to, uh, because then it's just gonna be hanging right in front of one of their faces waiting for them to grab stuff. So it'll be a little bit more contained. They don't seem to question when things are closed containers. Uh, we'll have that all set up in the car that way. But I wanna show you all of the, the components that you can get with this thing and some of the different setups. It, it looks hard to do and, and a lot of pieces and a lot of figuring out, but it's really not. It's pretty straightforward. Let's take a little bit of time. So let's go down the table and take a look. All right, so I mentioned that there's a lot of different components uh, that you can get for this thing. So we'll kind of start outside in uh, and, and work our way through them. So. The bag that you're looking at right now uh, kind of goes along the lines of what I said in the intro with, you know, closed containers raise less questions. This is a pretty benign looking package. This is the sleeping bag uh, that ANA that Tactical sells. And it is uh, basically a container for your LMO fight station in an obnoxious pattern. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember if there's other patterns offered or not. I, I want to say... This is what's shown on the uh, main page, so I didn't really question that because this is one that, that I had. Uh, but this is a sleeping bag. It's a container, uh, dual drawstring, so you can tighten this thing up just like a drawstring bag. If you, for whatever reason, didn't want to use the vehicle mounting setup and you just wanted to hang this thing somewhere, you could run the strap out of the top, hang it over your headrest like that, and then you would just have this kind of floating back there, keeping everything out of eyesight from from whoever all right you open it up it fits really well you can see there's a lot there's a lot of extra room it's a stretchy material so if i had this thing really built out all the way across the front it would still stretch out just fine uh, and then you've got your alamo fight station with a couple of other components attached inside of there uh, so if you have any experience with the shaw uh four wide placard shell thing that i don't remember off the top of my head this is constructed in, in a little bit, or a few ways similar to that. So you've got a uh, shot cord kind of lacing on the side to control the depth of your Alamo fight station. And then it is actually kind of designed to be double wide if you wanted to run two ANA tactical inserts in here. The, the bottom or the kind of the U that makes the bottom is uh, Velcroed on there, so you can actually drop it down a good ways and have more depth. If you wanted your M4 mags to basically sit flush in here, you could, especially when it's single wide, just to kind of further reduce the visible contents of it. Uh, that is like a single layer of, of laminate that, that builds that, and then you can see the Velcro in there at just the top inch or inch and a half. Uh, however, the exterior of the chassis is all lined with loops. So you can drop that all the way down to that bottom inch if you wanted to. I didn't need it yet. Still playing around with configurations on this thing, uh, but you, you have that freedom there. Really, that's built to give you the, the width that you need without necessarily extending this further down so that you can run dual layer inserts. All right, speaking of the insert, it has uh, a four cell doubled up uh, elastic insert. So much like the sea cucumber buns that ANA Tactical makes, this will fit M4 mags in the back and pistol mags or similar sized items in the front. Uh, or, you know, you can just use it as a dual purpose single layer, like maybe you want M4 mags or sub guns you can do either or. You can kind of see when you when you push the insert to its extreme, 
you do get some voids between the Velcro of the chassis and the insert, which is exactly what I've got the Surefire dropped in there uh, right now. It doesn't seem to be having any issues with the lockup of the Velcro, um, but it, it potentially, if you really overloaded this thing and you had a bunch of weight on the front of it and you didn't lace up the sides very tight, there's a chance you could get it to pull away. Uh, it's not really happening right now. This is in there pretty well, uh, but it ended up kind of making doubled up pistol cells here. So I, I could run a flashlight or a multi-tool or uh, a bundle of chem lights or something in those voids if I wanted to. Uh, it, it wouldn't be retained in any way, shape, or form because those cells are not tight uh, because they're just kind of accidental voids. But with it being kind of a, a sling bag carry-all, maybe that works for you. All right, so I just wanted to kind of show that that possibility there. Everything else in here right now, though, does have uh, tension on it. And you can see nothing's coming out. All right, so we got four uh, M4 mags in the back there. Only reason I didn't throw in another pistol mag is I just don't have one handy right now. So three pistol mags in there. And you can see once I pop out those pistol mags and kind of resituate the chassis, now everything is, is married back up and it's fitting nice and flush. With the cells, so the insert is a, a separate piece. It does come with shock cord uh, and retainers there. I didn't really see a strong need for that right now. Uh, so I don't have that set up yet uh, because it's just more shock cord in what has the potential to be kind of, if, you know, and this is user dependent, kind of a rat's nest of shock cord on the front. Uh, with the chassis itself, you do get some extra shot cord so that you can do arts and crafts on the front or on the bottom of this thing and mount stuff to it. Uh, the way that I'm, I'm kind of leaning on, on setting this up is I think I'm going to get uh, a, a dedicated IFAC pouch instead of just throwing components on here with shot cord and then uh, something else. Uh, either another kind of larger pouch or individual cell pouches for a couple of small smoke grenades and maybe some pepper spray or something like that, or tools, uh, flashlights and tools. Not sure yet uh, how obnoxious I want to go with this thing, but kind of the world's your oyster in setting that up. All right, so we'll, we'll get these mags out of here so I can show you kind of how this is set up internally here. So you got your insert and we can, we can open that up. Now that is this, this large chunk of Velcro that you're seeing here. That is that floating bottom piece. And then if we reattach this, and this is kind of why it looked like it was pulling apart earlier. That is now the outer face of the, the bottom U floating in there. And then this is the reinforced kind of curve backed or internal curve with Velcro and, and laminate. Uh, exterior face of the chassis. So if I dropped this down a little bit, probably get better lockup uh, across the whole face. And obviously your lockup is gonna increase or improve with a little bit of outward tension on here as well. I also loosened this up to fit the two layers. Uh, so that could be tightened back up again, which would increase that lockup. So the insert is a, a separate purchase. The outer chassis, uh, I just checked, is $52. The insert, I want to say, is around $40. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, and then there's various straps and the vehicle mounting set up. So all told, I think this whole setup that Austin sent me is about $200, uh, which isn't, uh, isn't a bad deal, especially when you consider, and you guys haven't seen it yet, how well done the mounting assembly is because it's really really well done all right so if you wanted to use his insert uh as a as a dual layer so let's say you wanted to put eight m4 mags in here you would buy two inserts and then he has a loop to loop adapter because the the insert here is is a hook on on both sides you put the loop to loop adapter in there and then you drop a second insert in there and that will allow you to run either dual layer 
uh, M4 mags or dual layer SMG mags or kind of a mix, or you could really, really, you know, pay out all this shot cord, spread, drop this really low so it has as much bulk as possible, and you could start, you know, smashing four layers of things in there. You'll notice the, the backside with the M4 cells has a little bit better uh, Velcro lockup than the pistol mag, but that's just because we're, we're competing with, with pulling things apart here. Right. Then we got two different flavors of strap on here. There is a XL uh, carry handle, which is this Tropic one. Uh, you can see this is very easy to adjust by grabbing this tri-glide and pulling it. Uh, and there's your your longer carry handle. And then your shorter carry handle here has this laser cut piece to help join those so it makes a more comfortable carry handle. So the way that I'm kind of envisioning this, would you would you necessarily want both of those mounted on there? I don't know. It's very cleanly done the way that I've got it set up right now. Uh, so if you take your, your easy to adjust XL shoulder strap or carry handle here, and take all the slack out of it. It's not much bigger, just a little bit bigger than the regular carry handle. So I had tucked that inside of here just to place that up as it's mounted in the car. And then the way that I kind of envision using that is you've got your kind of grab and go, get out of the car quick, uh, get to some sort of cover or wherever you're going and then take a couple seconds, release the, the longer one, pay out the slack real quick, and now you have a shoulder bag, uh, which works out pretty well. Uh, it's a shoulder bag with open-topped access to things that you might deem important uh, in, a, in a rapid setting with good retention on them. All right. Uh, I... Earlier in the day, recorded the vehicle side of this, so if this doesn't make sense, uh, we'll get it all, all put together here by the end. But your kind of quick deploy setup here is three Fidlock buckles. These come with the vehicle adapter, not the chassis, uh, but I did install them. It's a very easy install once you, if you, if you haven't already put it together, and if you have already put it together, it's still not bad. But these are all split bar buckles. Uh, that just thread into this. There's really only one way you can do it, uh, which is kind of the almost all the way spread out on the top and then centered on the bottom. Uh, but when you pull this red strap, it releases all three Fidlock buckles together and it pulls straight off of the vehicle mounting. Really well done. Uh, I think it's the only like essentially silent uh, quick release vehicle setup that I've seen. Works really well. I'm, I'm actually really, really impressed by the, the design there. Uh, and then to show you how these straps install, you can put these anywhere that you want and kind of your only uh, challenge is where the vehicle adapter ends up sitting. So if you're not using the vehicle adapter, you can put these things anywhere you want. If you are using the vehicle adapter, you're a little limited, at least on, on the, the seat side for where you put the straps, but the straps are terminated by a little Tegris tab here, a curved tab. So you thread this however far you want into the chassis, and then this just locks up with, in this instance, the bottom of the chassis. With the shorter one, I've got it internal, and you can see it tucked into the interior of the chassis there, so it, it's reinforced with the curve that's in the chassis versus uh, potentially just being webbing anywhere else on here. If you had like done this backwards and mounted it, that would just be pulling on the, the laminate there. This one coming out of the bottom is still on the curve of the chassis, but it's it, it has the potential to pull loose because it's not really secured anywhere else just by nature of trying to have those two straps stacked on top of each other. Uh, and I think those straps are both $10, $15 a piece. Um, nothing nothing excessive there. So that is the Alamo Fight Chassis uh, with its accessories. Coming up immediately after this, you should see the vehicle kit and this thing thrown on there. I will say, uh, once you 
once you have this thing loaded up and you are, if you carry it by this or you try to hold it by the strap when you're remounting it in the vehicle, the weight of the chassis is enough to overcome those fid locks. Uh, so you're not going to get it to lock up if you're holding it by the quick release handle. Like it's, it's, it's on there when it's mounted, uh, but it doesn't take much to pull that red handle. Uh, so I recommend holding it by the side and then it's pretty easy to get the muscle memory down to find the footprint uh, on the back of your vehicle. So there you go. Pay attention for the, the mounting at the end and uh, thanks for watching guys. All right, guys, so we're looking at the car mount for the Alamo. Uh, this is a chunk of the Romulus material that a a sells with uh, three fid locks on it. And then that mounts to your seat in a pretty straightforward manner. Uh, you've got the top piece, which is some curve that the headrest brackets thread through. Uh, my headrest was a little bit bigger than the hole. I think I measured my headrest at 9 sixteenths, and I think the hole's cut for half inch. 30 seconds on the Dremel, fix that up. Got plenty of curve left. I'm not worried about losing any, any strength there. Uh, so that's where all of the kind of load bearing of this comes from. Then you've got your side uh, strap here, which threads all the way through. It's not hard mounted anywhere in here. So you can adjust the buckle wherever you need it. I just put mine on the outside edge of the seat. Figured it's most out of the way there. Uh, and, and no risk of the kids kind of grabbing that and popping it if it was on the other side more exposed. And then down here on the bottom, you've got a curved plastic piece. Ideally, the frame of the seat would be the best place to do that. If I dropped this whole thing down a little bit, I think I could reach. Uh, but for right now, I just have it on the edge of the upholstery here. It seems reinforced enough on the edge there. There's some sort of reinforcing piece in there. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that because these straps are really not bearing any load, primarily up here, and then a little bit of the anti-sway coming from the sides there. Uh, and then we already mentioned the three Fidlock buckles. They engage with the three Fidlock buckles on the uh, Alamo, and then they engage just like that to hold it onto your seat and everything. To remove it, pull the red strap, comes right off. All right, we'll look more at the Alamo here in just a minute. 